this is a big day for for Microsoft and Apple as far as what we're going to show. I mean, you know, Intune always supported Mac, but not really in this way. So I mean, I'm excited. Um, I'm going to even break talking to them. I'm going to talk to you for a second. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the Intune for Mac Cup. It's got a, I guess you could put water in it. It's got a, I don't know if that's a straw or a, a cleaning thing, but either way, I mean, you're not, I mean, this is a partnership right here. What? Oh, the other thing. Yeah, we could talk about that too. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to show you platform SSO with the Mac. Basically, this gives you the same experience as Windows Autopilot. You boot your Mac, it reaches out, it sees that it's supposed to be enrolled in Intune, you sign in with your Azure credentials, and it provisions the local account for you. This is really big. A lot of folks have been waiting for it. Now, uh, it's very hard to do this virtually, so I set up a, a physical. Uh, I set up a physical Mac. And I did a capture card. It did mess with my camera. So uh, when I'm not talking to you, you're not going to see the little picture of me. So you're just going to have to imagine a bald guy yapping at you. Um, but other than that, we're just going to get into it. I, I mean, I think the cup is cooler, but that's, you know, no one wants. You can't talk about the cup for more than like a few minutes. Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so before we get started with Intune, you do need to have an Apple Business Manager account. Uh, think of this as the autopilot to the Windows, so the Mac has to be registered up here, and you would have had to connect this with Intune already. There's tons of documentation out there for it. I'm not going to get into it because there's just no reason to here, and it's not my Apple Business Manager account, so I can't show you everything here, but what I will show you very briefly is this. All right, so I will show you. I have my device here. It is enrolled in Apple Business Manager. This is the Mac I'm gonna be using. That's the serial number. And I have connected, um, I have connected it to Intune. When we go over here to Devices, Mac OS Enrollment, I have an enrollment program token set up, and that's part of setting up um, the Apple Business Manager. When we go to the enrollment program here, if you go to devices, it's going to show you that one device. So this is it coming in from Apple Business Manager. So the serial number is already here. Again, think of this like autopilot. We do need an enrollment profile, so I'm going to show you how to create one. We're going to call it whatever. I'm going to call this YouTube Mac enrollment. I already have one configured, but I'm just going to walk you through it. So user affinity, we want enroll with user affinity. Authentication method, it's very important. Now that platform SSO is out, um, we click on setup assistant with modern authentication. Now, one thing I will say with the modern authentication, uh, just make sure you're using uh, Mac with the latest OS. So you need uh, basically 10, 15 or higher. I don't remember if that's the Jack Cheese one or the vacation spot. I don't remember what they're calling it now. Monterey or something like that. And as far as uh, you also need the company portal deployed um, and it has to be deployed as a required app um, because that is what basically completes the entry registration or enter join in this case. Down here, just some uh, user experience options, await final configuration. Yes, we want to basically make sure we get our uh, profiles configured before we move forward. And then yes, for locked enrollment, we don't want a user to be able to not do that. Um, and just kind of like autopilot, you can show or hide as much of that out of box experience as you want, right? So we can choose to hide pretty much everything we want. Um, in my case, I'm going to allow touch ID. I don't want an Apple ID. I want them to use the local account. They can do the display tone. Uh, I'm going to hide fire vault because I'm going to enforce that with policy. Um, you know, you just basically configure this the way you want, and then you can customize your department and uh, department phone number in that configuration screen. So I'm going to say Rubik's Dev IT Department, and I'm going to say the phone number is 888-888-8888. That is a real phone number. Um, and now this is very important when you create a local account. You have to make sure that await final configuration was set to yes. So this one right here, that has to be yes, because um, everything has to kind of finish provisioning before we can set that. So let's go ahead and choose yes. 
and you're gonna have the option to pre-fill some account stuff. So what's gonna happen here is with the primary account name, I'm gonna show you, um, I'm just gonna open a, uh, a notepad for us. So you have two things. So you have the primary account name, okay? That is the actual account name on the device. So they use what's called the partial UPN for that. And then the, uh, the full name, so the primary account full name, they use the username. So this means for primary account name partial UPN, if we use Rick Jones, which I mean, we always use Rick Jones, that partial UPN is going to be rick.jones. So the local account on the device that gets created is going to be Rick Jones. Uh, the primary account full name, the Mac puts a more full name in there. That's just going to be his username. So that'll be more the user display name. So in this case, it'll be Rick Jones. So just, Hey, understand that works. And you can also restrict the editing. So folks can't change that. Okay. So you should have your profile. I have my one profile here and you should also be able to make sure the device has the profile assigned and it'll tell you, um, what profile it has. And in my case, I have it called platform SSO for Mac. So it is assigned and it should be ready to go. The other thing you're going to need is an app. So we're going to go to Mac OS. You are going to need this Intune company portal application. And, um, you can grab that. I'll put the link below. It comes from this page. You basically just download it as uh, a line of business app and you just upload that through Intune, like a win 32. Um, if you don't know, I'll show you real quick. You add, you choose a line of business app, select, and then you just point to the download file you get from that site and it's company portal installer.pkg. Once that uploads, you can just like the Intune Win32, you can customize and you could assign it. Um, and these are all the bundle IDs that are included in that. So that's pretty much it. Um, Okay, we got that. Finally, we need a configuration profile for the platform enrollment. So we're going to go to configuration profiles and platform SSO for Mac. And I already have mine configured. I'm just going to walk through how to create one though. So new policy, settings catalog, and create. Add the setting. So you're just going to search for SSO. And we want authentication, extensible single sign-on, SSO. And there's a ton of settings here. We don't need them all. So let me walk you through the ones uh, we need. Um, we need the extension identifier. Okay. Uh, under platform SSO, we're going to need authentication method. And we are going to need use shared device keys. Cool. We're going to need the registration token screen lock behavior, the team identifier, and the URLs. So let's take a look at everything there. Okay, so the URLs, you're going to need all these. And these are included in the link. I'm going to put this link below that lists them out so you don't obviously have to memorize them, what I'm showing you here. Um, and it'll talk you through a few other settings. The extension identifier is static. That basically points to the company portal as an extension. Our authentication method is the user secure enclave. If you're not familiar with Max, this is really the equivalent of a TPM on the device. We are going to use the shared device keys. Now the registration token, because we're connected to Apple Business Manager, we can just use the device registration variable. So we're just going to use that same registration um, because we're already connected. We want the screen lock behavior to be do not handle. Team identifier, again, this is specific for platform SSO on the Mac. So this will be in the link and our type is redirect. You can go ahead and click save. And again, you'd assign those to all your Mac devices. All right, let's see what that experience is. Okay, so let's get started. Um, it's a little yellowy, but that's that true tone. So we're gonna ignore that. It's, that's a feature. Uh, we're gonna hit continue, not now for accessibility. We're gonna choose our Wi-Fi network and I am gonna connect us or you can be hardwired, either one is fine. So you can see automatically now, it found that I'm being managed by the Rubik's Dev tenant. Um, so it's basically telling me management's required. I really can't do anything about it. So I'm gonna hit enroll. 
Now what's really cool is right here is where it pops up and, and makes me log in. This is, this is what makes it like the autopilot experience. So I'm gonna type in Rick Jones at rubixdev.com. And that's gonna take me, you can see right to my Rubix login. Now you can see it's installing the enrollment profile and it's kind of blocking me out until it's done, right? This is very similar to ESP. This goes back to that setting uh, when we said wait for enrollment to finish. So it's going to go through and do what it's uh, supposed to be doing. Um, I don't want the Apple ID, so I'm going to hit set up later. And take a look at the local account. It pretty much did what I said. The full name is Rick Jones. The partial name or the account name is the first part of the UPN. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in with my password. Now it is creating the local account, so uh, in theory there's a, this is a local password for this local account until we complete the registration. All right, for time zone, I'm going to go ahead and allow it to use my current time zone to pick the time. Oh, that's good enough. And touch ID. So this is cool because this is very similar to Windows Hello for Business. I'll be able to use my biometrics for the SSO. So let's go ahead. So now what, right? Um, so what's gonna happen at this point is, uh, so already I got an update notice from Microsoft because Company Portal is installing. So, and if we look here, uh, we have a pop-up, registration required, please register with your identity provider. So I'm gonna click on that and it is gonna allow me to use my uh, Touch ID. So this is where I complete the registration process. Yep, let's just, get that to go away. Rick Jones at rubixdev.com. And because this is obviously kind of a sensitive thing, it should prompt me for MFA. Okay, preparing the device. And there you go, that's my MFA. So I am gonna choose the text option. All right, so it's telling me to open system settings and enable the enter pass key. I could use my touch ID for this and turn it on. And there we go. So I should be all set. Okay, so back here, I just wanna show you kind of the experience. So I'm gonna go back to the enter portal and uh, well, let's first search for the name of that device. So in Intune, we're gonna go to devices. You can see I have one Mac device now. There we go. It's called Rick's MacBook Pro. Let's, uh, all right, so we're gonna go to devices and I'm gonna search for Rick's MacBook Pro. There it is. And take a look at that, Microsoft Entra joined. It's linked to the Intune object, so I can hit manage. It'll take me back over there. And uh, just like everything else, I'm gonna see all my configurations. The platform SSO was applied. Device is corporate owned and we look like we're in good shape. All right, I mean, so this is cool, right? This is, I think, another step closer to unified endpoint management. The fact that you can do this, the fact that it makes it easier to, uh, with the identities, you just log in with your Microsoft credentials. Uh, in my opinion, this is a, a very, very smooth process. So hopefully you can start getting it set up. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Hop in the Discord, let me know. And as this progresses, as you know, more things come to it, we'll, uh, we'll be covering it. So uh, I think that's it. We'll be seeing you.